Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We praise God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for allowing us to be alive in the land of the living and to experience his goodness and his greatness. Certainly, God is still good and he is still worthy to be praised. We thank all of you uh, for joining us this morning uh, on our conference call. And for those of you who are joining us as well on our Facebook Live, we thank you uh, very much. We know this has been a very long week for everyone, uh, but we thank God that through it all, uh, we can still lift up our heads and know that the King of glory, our God, is still among us. He is still with us. He is still for us. He has never left us. He has never forsaken us. And just that alone, just that truth alone, gives us reason uh, to praise our God. At this time, we're going to have uh, our scripture reading read by Deacon Hooks and our prayer. And so let us uh, prepare now for the reading of scripture and prayer. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Stronger Hope family. I'll be reading from Psalm 42, verses 1 through 5. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, As the deer pants for the water brook, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. While they continually say to me, where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Let us pray. God, our Father, we come now at this hour of the day, thanking you, O God, for your many blessings that thou hast bestowed on us. Lord, we thank you for the early rising on this morning. We thank you for this present moment we share in this virtual worship. Lord, we thank you for the early rising on this morning. We thank you that it wasn't the alarm clock that woke us up this morning, but you touched that old button of nature. God, you're able our eyes to fly wide open and behold a brand new day. Now, Lord, we thank you for food, raiment, and shelter. In the midst of the storm, Lord, we thank you for all that we have. We thank you for health and strength. Lord, we thank you for the Stronger Hope Baptist Church family. We thank you for our shepherd. We thank you for our leader. Lord, as we come now, God, into this worship experience, Lord, we ask your Holy Spirit to rain down upon us. Although we may not be physically together, but our spirit are connected in you that you will touch each and every one of us, O oh God. Lord, we ask that you would lift up the bow down head, O oh Lord. We ask that you would ease the troubled hearts today, O oh God. Lord, give us vigor, vitality of health and strength, O oh God, to continue to run this race, O oh God. And Lord, we ask that you would touch those that are still struggling through Hurricane Ida. 
Lord, we ask that you will restore within us the fruit of the Spirit. Give us that joy, O oh God. Give us peace, O oh God. Give us love in the midst of the storm, O oh God. We thank you. Now, Lord, we ask that you will touch anyone that is sick among us, O oh God. Give them healing power, O oh God. O oh God, give them healing strength, O oh God. Touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, O oh God. Touch those that are bereaved today, O oh God. Lift up that bow down here. Wipe away their tears stain on our eyes, O oh God. We pray today, O oh God. Lord, we ask that you would bless every church that are open in your name today, O oh God. O oh, touch pastors all over this land that have to make changes to deliver your message to hurting people, oh God. We thank you today, oh God. Touch this whole mean, dark, every night world, oh God. We ask that you would just give us peace right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Touch this city, this state, this world as a whole, oh God. We need you right now, God. We ask you right now, in the mighty master's name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Oh, from the rising of the Sun until the gold went down of the same. He's worthy. Jesus is worthy. He's worthy to be praise oh yes praise him oh praise him oh yes praise him praise him jesus jesus Blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Well, to God be the glory. We thank God for the privilege and for the opportunity to still worship, although it is in the fashion of being virtual. We still thank God that we're able to worship him in spirit and in truth. We thank God for the reading of scripture and prayer by Deacon Hooks. At this time, we're going to yield to him as he sh uh, shares with us a worship by giving. Let the church, wherever you are this morning, wherever you are today, let the church of the living God say amen.
Amen. To God be the glory. We thank God for our worship by giving. At this time, I want you to join with me. Join me in Philippians. I want you to turn your Bibles <clears throat> to the book of Philippians chapter 4. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Philippians chapter 4 Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. I'm going to read this from the New King James Version. And so you're going to find these similar words. Listen at how it reads. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let's read that one more time. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. The word of the Lord, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord shall stand forever. With that text in mind, I want to talk from this thought. Remember to rejoice. That's what I want to talk about this morning as we continue to navigate to the other side of the storm that we've been in. I want to share that with you on today. Remember to rejoice. Remember to rejoice. For the past week, we have all been in all sorts of places, literally and figuratively. Places that have been seemingly favorable to a positive, joyful attitude and places that have been seemingly unfavorable to a hopeful and joyful attitude. But I want to contend today that where we are, that is, the nature of our circumstances, where we are, should never determine our joy and our rejoicing. Furthermore, church family, I want to contend today that maintaining the attitude of joy and maintaining the action of rejoicing is indeed a struggle. But it is, thank God, through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit within us that we can rejoice 
in the Lord regardless of what we encounter in life. During his second missionary journey, the Apostle Paul, along with his missionary team, Silas, Timothy, and Luke, planted the first Christian church on European soil. And that was in the city of Philippi. This background, this back story is provided for us by Luke uh, in the book of Acts chapter 16. Now, although Paul's mission in the city of Philippi would result in Paul and Silas being beaten, publicly dishonored, humiliated, and as Luke describes in the 16th chapter, thrown into prison, in fact, put into the inner prison and having their feet fastened in the stocks. In spite of that, the seeds of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ would grow into a Philippian church that was devoted to Christ, that was loyal to the Apostle Paul, to a, a Philippian church that was very sacrificial and generous. Now, some scholars maintain that about 10 years have passed since Paul established the church in the city of Philippi. And he writes this letter to them. This letter to the Philippians is only four chapters, only 104 verses, not a long book, not a big book. But it is, I shall tell you, it is equally inspired by God as any other book in the Bible. It is equally breathed out by God as any other book in the Bible. In this letter, Paul informs the Philippian Christians of his present situation. In this letter, the Apostle Paul exhorts them to persevere together in Christ despite the persecution that they were currently facing as a church. In this letter, the Apostle Paul explains uh, to them unity through humility. In this letter, he explains why he had to send Epaphroditus back so soon. In this letter, he warns them of the dangers of false teachings and false preaching. And in this letter, he expressed his gratitude for their generosity towards them, towards him. I love this letter. I, I love the letter that Paul writes to the Philippian Christians. Because this particular letter is filled with biblical themes such as joy and unity, the gospel, partnership, and salvation. And in this section of Philippians chapter 4, starting with verse 1, Paul reveals to us his genuine love for this church. He expresses his love for them. And what can we say about that? We can say this, that Paul really loves this church. In verse 1 of chapter 4, look at what Paul says. He says, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown. Paul loves this church. 
Not that he did not equally love the other church, but churches that he established in the Roman uh, Empire and the Roman Roman world. But but he has a a special place for these Philippian Christians. He really loves this church. And since he loves them, he must urge them. And since he loves them, he must exhort them to live gospel-filled lives. Paul talks about that in chapter 1 and verse 27. He says, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Now, look at where we are today, chapter 4, verses 2 to verse 9. Because what Paul writes about in chapter 4, verses 2 to verse 9, has already been mentioned by Paul in the earlier chapters of this particular book. What are you saying, Brother Pastor? I'm saying this, that Paul has already talked about unity. Paul has already talked about rejoicing. Paul has already talked about gentleness. Paul has already talked about prayer. He has already talked about Christian, Christ-like character. But it is the Holy Spirit of God who causes Paul to reiterate these things in a different way. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 20 reads for us, For prophecy never came by the will of men, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Paul reminds them to rejoice because the Spirit of God wants them to remember that. Paul reminds them to rejoice. He's talked about it already. But it's necessary for him to talk about it again. Oh, church family, Philippians chapter 1, verse 18, look at what Paul says. Christ is preached, and in this I rejoice. Yes, and will rejoice. Look at what Paul says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 17. He says, yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Oh, keep, keep indulging me because look at what Paul says in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 1. He says, yes. Well, let's look at the fact that Paul has already mentioned, he's already mentioned rejoicing. He's already mentioned this theme of joy and rejoicing in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 1 and in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 17 and in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 18, but he writes about it again. He reiterates it. He repeats it in a different way, but the concept is still there. And listen, people of God, given the world we are living in today, we need to be reminded to rejoice. We need to be reminded to rejoice in the Lord. Regardless of how many sermons and Bible studies we've heard on the subject matter of joy or rejoicing, we need to be reminded today, rejoice in the Lord. Oh yes, people of God, these biblical themes, biblical truths need to be restated. They need to be reiterated. They need to be repeated 
<clears throat> so that we can continue living spirit-filled lives that honor Christ Jesus our Lord, that glorify our Heavenly Father. In other words, these truths need to be restated so that we can remember how we're going to live. What does rejoicing mean? What does rejoicing mean? That's an interesting word in the Greek and the, the structure and the nature of that word suggests to us that this uh, word means to rejoice, not just sometimes, but this is a continual action. This, this word calls for a lifestyle of joy, a lifestyle of joy. And this lifestyle of joy comes from an active choice that we choose to make regardless of what we are confronted with in life. That's rejoicing. But why rejoice? Why? Why rejoice? I'll share with you why, because in this life, we as people, we tend to misplace our joy. And we tend to fail to rejoice due to our adversary, Satan, due to our adversities, due to our affliction and our anguish. That's why we need to rejoice and remember to rejoice because in this life, we tend to misplace our joy. We tend to fail to rejoice because of our adversary and because of our adversities and our afflictions and our anguish. But the text teaches us today, as it is written by Paul, who is moved by the Spirit of God to write, that I can rejoice because of what Jesus has done for me. Oh, do you know him this morning? Does he live in your heart? Do you have, an, do you have a, a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Because if you do, then you can rejoice in the Lord because of what he has done for you, because of what he is doing for you, and because of what he will do for you. The songwriter said, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. That's the reason why I sing. He, he watches over me. Uh, what, what, what are some of the reasons why you can rejoice in the Lord? Well, I, I sing because Paul said in the in another letter to the Ephesians, for by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the, it is the gift of God. We, we, can, we can rejoice because God has given us a free gift. He's given us salvation. That's why I rejoice. I may not have everything I want, but God has given me everything he knows I need. I can rejoice. I may not have everything I desire, but God in his inexhaustible mercies has not given me what I really deserve. And you know what we deserve as as people who fall short of the glory of God, we deserve death. We deserve damnation. We deserve disease. We deserve devastation. But we serve a merciful God who has not given us what we really deserve, but, who ha but has given us something he knows we really do not deserve, and that's grace. 
thank you, Lord, for not giving us what we really deserve. That's why I can rejoice. It was David, the psalm writer, who said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined to me, and he heard my cry, and he also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He put a new song in my mouth. That's why we can rejoice. We can rejoice in the Lord because of what God has done for us. Because of what God is doing for us. And because of what God will do for us. Because he watches over us. Because he keeps us. Because of the fact that all of our help comes from him. Because of the fact that he promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Even when we go through the waters and pass through the waters and go through the flood. And even when we are in the fiery furnace, he is still with us. That's some of the many reasons why we can rejoice because he knows what we need and he's able to provide for us everything that we need. We can rejoice in the Lord. Let me ask you this next question. Where does your joy live? Where does your joy live? <laughs> Where does your joy live? Is your joy predicated on your current situation? If I had to, if I had to write you a letter, where would you want me to send it? Is your joy located at a beach house? Is your joy located at a five-star resort away from all of the problems and issues of life with no cares and no concerns? Where, where is your joy located? Where does your joy live? Does your joy live in some situation where you have better behaved kids? Does your joy live in a situation where you have a better husband, a better wife, a better job or a bigger job, a bigger bank account, a better car, a better house, more vacation time, a bigger church, where does, where does your joy currently live? What's the address? What's the number for your joy? Is it more control over what happens in your life? Less trouble and less heartache? Let me ask you that again. Where does your joy live? Oh, I'm... I'm so grateful for this letter that Paul writes. And you know where Paul wrote this letter now, don't you? You do know where Paul composes this letter. Listen, the place where Paul composed this letter, the place of composition, the place where Paul writes this letter is important because it serves to remind us that our joy comes from the Lord. That our joy is in the Lord. Paul does not write this letter from a beach house. Paul does not write this letter from some exquisite resort. Paul does not write this letter with the sun shining down on him. Paul does not write this letter in some comfortable, convenient circumstance or location. Paul is in prison. 
he is under Roman house arrest. Many scholars have debated for centuries the exact location. That's not up for debate this morning. Some say he was in Ephesus when he was uh, under Roman house arrest. Some say he was in the city of Caesarea. Some say that he was in the city of Rome. But any student of scripture agrees on this one truth about Paul's situation. He was in jail. Paul was in incarcerated. Paul, the man who was once on the move for God, was now under Roman house arrest. That's where he is. That's his situation. And yet, Paul says, I rejoice. And he encourages the Philippian Christians to rejoice as well. Our joy is found in the Lord. Our rejoicing comes from the Lord. That attitude and that action comes from him. Where does your joy live this morning? Is it found in the Lord Jesus Christ and in the reality that you know what he has already done for you? We've seen lightning flash. We've heard the thunder roll. We've, we have been in a storm. We are still in a pandemic. We are still in a divided country and nation, but Children of God can still get up in the morning and still make the affirmation and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm rejoicing in the reality of who God is. I'm rejoicing in the reality of what God has Done. I'm rejoicing in the fact that he woke me up this morning, started me on my way. I'm rejoicing in the fact that God is still keeping me. Our joy comes from the Lord. Our rejoicing is in the Lord. And Paul, finally, with just this one verse, He teaches us when to rejoice. He teaches us when to rejoice. Look at what Paul says in the text. He says, always, not every now and then, not when you feel like it. It's not based on your feelings because feelings are subject to change and feelings fluctuate and they go up and down. My joy is not based on how I feel. My joy is not based on whether or not I'm on top of the mountain. My joy is not based on whether or not I'm in some valley of anguish or sorrow. My joy is based on the fact that I have a relationship with God through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. I think we need to be reminded of that today as the church of the living God. As we continue to experience trouble in this world, tribulation, temptation, trials. We need to be reminded as the Philippian Christians to rejoice in the Lord always. There's a song that I love to sing every now and then. My soul has been anchored in the Lord. Billows may roll, breakers may dash. 
I shall not sway because he holds me fast. My soul is anchored in the Lord. I trust and hope that your soul is anchored in the Lord as we continue to experience what seems to be a stormy sea. Let Jesus take care of you. Let Jesus be who he is. Let go and let God have his way. Trust him and obey. Don't doubt him. Keep believing that he will work it out. Keep standing on Romans 8 and, and verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. And when you know those facts, when you know those truths, when you're reminded of those truths and reminded of those facts, you can rejoice in the Lord always. Let's have a closing word of prayer and then after that we'll have our announcements. Dear God, we pray today in the name of Jesus Christ that you would strengthen us and sanctify us for the responsibility of rejoicing in the Lord. Help us to know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Help us to be content in Christ. Help us to trust you as we go through some troubling times. We need you, Lord. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants our souls for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water, Lord, we long for you. We need you because you are everything that we need. Thank you for reminding us today of the importance of rejoicing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us where we are weak. Build us up where we are torn down. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and thank God. I hope you've been blessed by that word of encouragement on today. Philippians 4 and verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Remember to rejoice. Now at this time, Deacon Hooks is going to come with our announcements. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Pastor, for uh, that word. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Always. I just want to um, say happy birthday to Sister, Sister Cheryl Carter in the midst of rejoicing that we were able to come together on last Sunday. We weren't able to uh, say happy birthday to her. But we definitely want to say happy birthday to Sister Cheryl Carter, who closed out the month of August. Uh, so for the month of September today, Sister Jacqueline Wilson is celebrating her birthday today. Uh, also this week will be Brother Theodore Lewis on the 9th. Uh, Sister Mary Davis, one of our octogenarians on September the 11th. Brother Dwayne Richardson on the 14th, Brother Willie Johnson on the 19th, and we have a double hitter on the 26th of September, Sister Cynthia Bush and Sister Bonita Williams will be celebrating their birthday. Uh, we're in the midst of trying to locate all of our members. If you have not spoken with any of the leadership team, while you've been evacuated, please uh, give us a call. Pastor, myself, Sister Jackson, and Sister Dickerson, let us know where you are. We are concerned about you. Amen. And uh, that's all I have, Pastor. Thank you once again for that message on today to rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. Well, let's have our benediction and we're going to dismiss after that. We encourage you to 
uh, stand on God's word. Um, in times like these, we need one another to encourage one another, to support one another. And uh, we are praying for everyone's safe return. For those of you who have evacuated and are still in temporary places, uh, our prayer is that God would give you safe passage as you travel back uh, home. And we're praying for all people who are uh, still uh, displaced uh, by this uh, storm, of course, uh, our state uh, took a hit, uh, but not only uh, Louisiana, but other states as well. And this was a very devastating storm. It even uh, hit those northeastern states, states like New Jersey and Pennsylvania and New York took a hit as well. And so let's continue to pray uh, for one another. This is a this is a hard time for many, many people. Although this storm did not uh, go uh, one way as it was predicted and it went the way it wanted to go. And although some people were spared because of its last minute direction, uh, we have to be grateful for that. The fact that many people have been spared, but then many people were not. And so we have to balance uh, our gratitude with uh, empathy and sympathy for others uh, because there are many people who lost everything because of it. Uh, I thank God for the roof over my head and my family's head. Uh, we did not have any major damage uh, to our home, and I'm sure many of you did not have any major damages to your property, and we rejoice in that fact. We we are grateful to God, but at the same time, our hearts are hurting for those who lost absolutely everything and who cannot return home, and so let us be in prayer uh, for everyone. Uh, we're going to get through this together, amen? We're going to get through this uh, together. Hurricane season is not over with, so we cannot let our guards down. We got to just be uh, real and speak the truth. Uh, this is the peak season uh, for hurricane uh, season. And so let us continue to pray and uh, ask God to show us mercy. Uh, but if, and, and I say if, uh, if another one comes our way, we have to continue to be prepared. We have to continue to be prepared, have a plan in place, uh, know where you want to go, uh, talk with family members, check up on family members. We just got to continue to be prepared because we don't know. And we're living in uh, some days where we're not only experiencing natural catastrophes, but we're experiencing man-made catastrophes. A young a person lost their life because of gas, because of gasoline. People are fighting. People are shooting one another over gasoline. And so this is very troubling. This, this, is, a, this is a troubling reality for our world when someone will shoot someone else and kill them because of, of gasoline. We have to continue to pray, church. We have to continue to pray for the state of our communities and for the state of our world. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Let's look up to him. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To thee only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer. Go in peace and serve the Lord. We will see you next Sunday in the sanctuary. God bless.